Hello and welcome to another video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. I'm Trevor Lewis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Inkscape into a Chrome browser. Um, you can install this as a Chrome extension. Uh, I used to be able to find it by doing Inkscape extension when I just Google it, but now I have to put the word Chrome in there, otherwise I don't get to the right place. Uh, this is not ideal. This is only for people who have Chromebooks or who do not have install rights on their computer, but you can get it to work. Uh, it's not great. So you get here to the Chrome Web Store. You're going to press Add to Chrome. It's going to get ask you, are you sure? You're going to hit yes, and it's going to install. Uh, it's pretty easy. That's pretty much it. The hard part is using it. So Inkscape will show up up here, and you've got some other apps there, and you're going to just choose Inkscape. And what will happen is it will open Inkscape, and it's going to open it. See, it's going to take a little while. And I think what's actually happening here is that Inkscape is a program that is what's called open source so anyone can run Inkscape or build the program and these people have built this program in a window that exists to like a window to another computer so Inkscape is in this little square window in the middle with some tools that are up around the outside so this square window is like a, it's like a uh, view into another computer that's running Inkscape because you can't actually run it on your Chromebook. Over here is where you have your file manager. That's where you're going to get files in and out. But there's some differences. Like if I go to the path menu here, my favorite trace bitmap is just not there. So anything that's too hard for the computer to do is just not available in this version of Inkscape. So to get files in and out, you have to click on file manager here and it's going to open up a, uh, like a file manager in this other computer. So you can see I have a few files. Um, you can upload files. That's if you want to get an image in there and you can download files. So if I click on test DXF and download, that's how I'm going to get the file that I want to turn into Google Classroom downloaded. Um, if I want an image that I'm going to place in the file, I have to upload it first. So now when I go to import, instead of going to your computer, it goes to this weird virtual computer. So I can look at my preview here, pick out the picture and hit open and it'll open that image in there. Um, so it's a PNG, so there's a, this extra dialogue here, but this is my raster image that I want to trace. But since trace bitmap doesn't work, even though it says trace bitmap here, when I click on it, nothing happens because trace bitmap doesn't work in this version of Inkscape. So I'm going to have to use the Bezier curve tool instead. So I'm going to actually draw straight lines and curves and trace around the outside. So I'm going to hold down control key and scroll with my mouse to zoom in. And then I'm going to use the Bezier curve tool. And if I click, I'm going to put straight lines. But if I click and drag, you see these handles show up and that'll actually make a curve. So clicking and dragging along the edge of the curve works. And if you have a area with high detail, like the end of the nose here, you put more anchor points and you just kind of click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. But occasionally you're going to want a sharp point and you can see not all of mine are perfect. But I can come back in later with the edit by node tool and change these. But here in the bottom of the mouth, if I want that to be straight, I'm just going to do a single click and not click and drag. And that way I'll have a sharp point inside the mouth there so that I don't have a, a little tiny uh, curve there. I just have a sharp corner. So there's two types of nodes on this path. There are curved nodes where you click and drag and then straight nodes where you just click. Now I'm out of space, so I'm just going to scroll the mouse wheel and I go down. So that's why holding control to scroll is nice. But if I want to go over, I'm going to hold shift, hold shift and scroll. It'll help me go over. So this is kind of a long, hard process. And you can see it takes a really long time to trace all the way around. That's why trace bitmap is so much nicer. This is why you don't want to use this version if you have any other options at all. Um, but you can make decisions this way too, and you can make uh, decisions as you're working. But this is how you draw a vector graphics line as you're doing it one little node at a time. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to speed this up a little bit. So as we go fast mode here, you can see I'm editing a little bit here as I go. Like I'm not putting in the fingernail tips. Um, I didn't find like I wanted those in my in my actual image. And then I get I get to a point where for this demo purposes, I just simplify the hair here and I'm using scroll in and scroll out, holding control. And now I'm going to show you how to finish this up. So you can see right here at the end, I, I have my original starting point. There is a square box. So as I'm finishing this up and I'm making this eyelash here and I'm adding I'm trying to be careful to add uh, the right kind of detail and make sure that I get a nice sharp point there and then add curves in here where I need it. I'm going to make sure my last click is on the square and see how it turns red. 
That'll make sure it's an enclosed shape, which you need for the laser if it's going to cut it out. I'm going to hold shift and click on red there to show that I want the stroke to be red. I'm just doing that so you can see the stroke. And if I right click here on the number, I can set it to more millimeters thick. So now it's two millimeter thick stroke. And if I just regular click on the color, it fills in the color with blue. So that's how you set the, the stroke and fill. That's going to be really important later on. You can see there's the lines. You can get a good preview of what, I, what I've done here. Um, you can also see, I can delete it and see that underneath there are pixels. That was why I um, turned it into a vector image because the vector is a pathway and it doesn't, it's not res resolution based. So when, when I'm done there, I have this final image, but let me just show you what this looks like from the laser's point of view. I go to view, display mode, and choose outline. This will show just the pathways with no color. And you can see the vector image has pathways. The raster image does not. So that's what we need to do to turn something into something the laser can use is have a pathway for the laser to follow like this. You can see I can compare it to this sheet of paper here. The sheet of paper is a normal sheet of paper size. So then you know how big it will be coming out of the laser. So we got to save it twice. We're going to save it. And remember, we're saving to this fake computer, not our real computer. But we can save this SVG. We're going to make sure we have a good name. Um, the SVG file type is the kind that we can edit again later, but is not the kind that the laser uses. So we, that's why we always have to save everything twice. The laser file is going to be a DXF file. So you have to go to here where what, what kind of file it is. And instead of Inkscape SVG, we've got to scroll all the way down in this version to Desktop Cutting Plotter DXF file. When you save as a DXF file, I would save it with the same name so you don't get confused. And I would make sure that the base unit is set to millimeters because our laser speaks millimeters. And that way the units that you're sending will be the right size. So when you save with a base unit in millimeters, when I go to the file manager, I can download that file. So you can see it didn't show up here because I had this open before I hit refresh. And I'm going to see the file here. And then I can select the DXF file, the flowinghair.dxf. And I can press download and I can also download the SVG file in case I need to edit it later. So when I download this, that's the file that I'm going to actually end up putting up on Google Classroom. That's the file that I, Mr. Lewis, I'm going to have to feed into the laser so it'll cut it out for the laser for you. So that's how you use the Inkscape Chrome extension. Uh, remember, this is only if you have a Chromebook or a computer that does not allow you to install a new program. If you have a Windows device, even one from the school that you're not allowed to install new programs on, please watch my other video about how to use the Windows Store to add Inkscape. All right, good luck using Inkscape and have fun.